This is the second part of a two-part video about volume with washers. And so in the first part, we talked about how if we have two curves that we're rotating around the x-axis, that that creates an inside circle and an outside circle. So we end up having to basically subtract our two formulas. Now we're going to do this, except we're not going to rotate around the x-axis. We'll rotate against some other horizontal line. So it'll be a y equals line if it's horizontal. And it'll work just like when we did this with disks, where shifting up makes us subtract from our function, and shifting down makes us add to our function. And that has to do with the fact that if you are looking at a parabola, for example, and here's the x-axis, if you're trying to rotate it around a line that's lower than the x-axis, so that would be a negative line, well that makes our parabola bigger than if we were doing just the x-axis. So it's the opposite of what you would think. Subtraction or having a negative makes us add, having a positive makes us subtract. So let's give this a try. Everything else about this is going to be the same. So we're going to draw our two graphs. So one of these is, and you draw the graph without thinking about the fact that you are shifting up or down. Just have a couple of random marks there that I'm going to get rid of real quick. Okay. So the parabola we have starts at negative four and is a positive parabola. So you can plug this into your calculator if you have that as an option, or if you're supposed to do this without your calculator, then you would plug in numbers for x and see what happens. So these are the numbers that we should get. Then we're going to use the square root of x minus 4. And so that is a square root function that starts down here at negative 4. And so the next point we have will be up 1 over 1. Now here's the thing, and I didn't draw this very well, unfortunately, so it's kind of hard to tell. These um, are not the exact same. Like if you zoom in on what's happening, like which you could actually do if you have this on your calculator, your parabola is doing this kind of shape while your uh, square root function is doing this kind of shape. And so this right here is the part we care about that we're rotating around the line y equals negative one in this case. So this line right here. So what we need to do, because it's y equals negative 1 that we're rotating around instead of the x-axis, is we're going to add 1 to both of our equations so that we're really going to have x squared minus 3 and square root of x minus 3. And that's what we're going to use instead of what they gave us initially. So when we set this up, we'll have pi, because remember that we're doing volume. The boundaries of this are we have two points of intersection, one's at 0 and one's at 1. We are going to take the top function, and so you have to pay attention here. The function that is, I said top function, that's not actually what I meant. We want the farther fun function from our axis. If we're rotating around negative 1, what's farther away, the parabola or the square root? It would be the parabola. And so we're going to put in x squared minus 3 and we will square that. And then we're going to do the same thing, but with our square root function. And so we'll square it. And when we square these, remember you have to FOIL this out. And when we FOIL this out on the second part of this with the square roots, that's going to be kind of tricky if you haven't done that recently. x squared minus 3, when you FOIL it out, gives you x to the fourth minus 6x squared, because you have negative 3x squared twice, and then plus 9. That's our first part, and everything in front is still the same. But this part, if you FOIL it out, you might need to write it out and actually think about the steps. It might be harder to do in your head. Square root of x times square root of x would give you the square root of x squared which is just x, so they cancel the square root out because we're multiplying them together. Then when I do the outer term and the inner term, they're the same. They're both negative 3 square roots of x, so those add together and give us negative 6 square roots of x. And then last is negative 3 times negative 3, which is plus 9. 
We're going to add like terms, if possible, after we distribute the negative. So this is a nay of x, that doesn't have a like term, that'll be plus 6 squared of x. Oh, but the 9's are going to cancel, so that's something, at least. It'd be nice if more cancelled, but we got to take what we can get. So we have x to the 4th, minus 6x squared, we've got minus x, and plus 6 square roots of x. Now let's go ahead and change 6 square roots of x to 6x to 1 half, because we're going to use the power rule on this. So we have to add a power and divide. So pi times x to the fifth over 5 minus, I'm going to add a power and divide, so that's 6x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus, now this is the tricky one of these because it's a fraction. When I add one, I'm really going to add it as a common denominator of 2 over 2. So we get 6x to the 3 halves, but we need to divide by the 3 halves. And we're going to plug in 1 and 0. Well, plugging in 1 and 0 is going to be pretty easy, since it's just 1 and just 0. When I plug in 1, I'll have 1 to the 5th over 5, which is 1 fifth. 6 times 1 cubed over 3, which ends up being negative 2. And then minus 1 squared over 2. Well, that's going to be minus a half. And so the tricky part of this is the 6x to the 3 halves over 3 halves. If you simplify 6 over 3 halves, you can do that in your calculator by just asking it 6 divided by 3 halves and then changing it back into a fraction. Or you can think of it like back in the day when we divided fractions. We have 6 over 1 is the top. 3 halves we're going to flip so that it's 2 thirds. That gives us 12 thirds or 4. So that's 4 x to the 3 halves. So 4 times 1 to the 3 halves. This simplified to be 4x to the 3 halves. We plugged in 1 right here. 1 to the 3 halves is the same as 1 to any power, which is 1. So this is going to just be plus 4. We're going to put all these together. Common denominator, or put it in our calculator, whatever you want to do. And let's see, we get... 17 over 10 pi. So on this next one, it's the same idea. So you may have the hang of it now. You would pause the video and work it out yourself and then unpause the video to see if see how you did. That's a good way to check to see how much you're understanding as you go. Our axis is y equals 1. That's what we're rotating around. We've got the line y equals 3. That's one of our functions that's on one side of our figure that we've got. And then negative x squared plus 7. So that's going to start at 7 and open down. Or if you're plugging it into your calculator, go for it negative 7 and it opens down like so. And so we're trying to figure out if I rotate this part around the line y equals 1. And this actually, if you're thinking about it, would look a lot like a donut except where the middle of the donut like has clearly just like been cut out. Donuts are usually like rounded on the edges. This would not be. It would just like be clear cut in the middle. Think about it. You know I'm right. So we are going to have to shift because this is a positive one down one on both our graphs. Because look at this. This is if we pretend that the green line is the x-axis then this would really be like y equals 2. And this would really be like y equals negative x squared plus 6. So we're subtracting one to figure out what those would be if we adjusted it. So this is pi. Our boundaries are negative 2 and positive 2. Our function that is farther from our axis of rotation is the parabola. So negative x squared plus 7 will go first. Don't forget to square it. Minus our line, not 7, 6. Remember we adjusted it. So negative x squared plus 6 squared. 
and then minus our line after we've adjusted it, which is 2, so we'll do 2 squared. And we're going to figure out what this is. Let's FOIL out this first part. Pi negative 2 times negative 2 to 2. Negative x squared times negative x squared will be x to the fourth. And then we'll have negative 6x squared twice, which makes negative 12x squared. And then plus 36. And then this minus 2 squared will be minus 4 because the negative's not inside parentheses. So you square the 2 and then put the negative in front. Together that gives us 32. And then we'll integrate using the power rule. So we'll get x to the fifth over 5 minus 12x cubed over 3 plus 32x. We're plugging in 2 and negative 2, and this can simplify to be 4 if you want to save yourself a little bit of effort there. So we've got 2 to the 5th over 5 minus 4 times 2 cubed plus 32 times 2 minus, and we do the same thing again but with negative 2, making sure to put negative 2 in parentheses, although it won't really matter too much on this one since uh, since these are all odd powers and none of them are even. As long as you type it in right. That's always a key thing. So I I mean we can write out what these are. This is 32 fifths minus 32 plus 64 and then this is going to be the exact opposite, negative 32 fifths plus 32 minus 64. But if you're thinking, oh, they're opposites, so they'll cancel. Well, we're subtracting them, and so that's going to make that not happen. This is really plus 32 fifths minus 32 and plus 64. And so we actually get 64 fifths minus 64 plus 128. And if we put those together, we get 384 over 5. I lost my cursor. There it is. Pi. And that's our answer.